Hello and welcome to a Smurd P video and today we are looking at the Uncanny X-Men issue 4. And our story begins with something from the archives um, of Professor Xavier's journals where he is uh, reliving a past life with uh, Sarah and she is young and free and everything perhaps he isn't which is usually what happens opposites do do attract and um so we learn that she can't have coffee why can't she have coffee well she's pregnant and the conversation isn't as uh straightforward as perhaps sarah would have liked um xavier obviously being confused they're newly together so i guess the timing isn't right but he's also trying not to say the wrong thing you know have an abortion for example um because sometimes that happens in new relationships when mistakes happen um you're not ready for that step because you you don't even know each other at this point so um some people do make those decisions and uh this is not the way that she wanted the moment to be and she said how could you and that's how the prologue uh, sort of end. So, writer is Gail Simone, artist David Macus, artist Matthew Wilson, and Clay Clayton's Cows from VCs is on the letters. And I apologize if I said any name incorrect. So, Rogue in her mind is uh, trying to say, get to Logan as quickly as possible. And in her mind, she's thinking of all the bad things that have happened recently. Krakoa, Charles Xavier, you know, and she, she's sort of praying out there and all they can see is blood and she doesn't want uh, it to be Logan anything but Logan um, this man who um, who had given so much to her when she first joined the X-Men you know he, he he was the first one to sort of start bringing her into the fold um, after she helped save Mariko's life and he's all bloodied and ruined and trash. Sarah's done a real number on him. Uh, Rogue wants him back. She's going to stick around and obviously tackle all the villain. Now, I thought a little bit out of character, Wolverine was like, leave me uh, to die, which I thought was a bit bizarre because how many times... All right, he does look pretty bad, but he doesn't look as bad as, you know, his arms have been... Do you know what I mean? It's a bit... Um, it felt a bit of a step that was out of character from Logan and you know he even starts saying I beg you take my healing factor it's like oh my it just didn't it fell a little bit out of whack and and so far everything's been perfect with girls writing I'll be honest with you I've, I've enjoyed it so far so for that it just felt a little bit weird and then um then he's even saying give give me something to keep me you know some gas in the chamber and and you know then nightcrawler tells a lie and says krakoa lives krakoa yet lives which once again feels a little bit out of character this is a man who in some ways dedicates himself to the religion of a of a god and it seems out of character that he would do that um so anyway uh they're about to get going and then sarah goes yes come to mummy so I'm going to be honest with you, this bit is misleading. It's misleading you to think, wait a minute, we don't actually really know who Rogue's mum and dad are. Could it be? Um, I, I'm just going to squash that right now. No is the answer. Um, so <clears throat> she is powerful. And, uh, you know, she, she clearly hates X-Men quite deeply as she is a... Uh, on the assault of Rogue. Meanwhile, they get Logan back. There's still loads of blood everywhere, you know, he's... And, and it would be better if... We know that he's been a bit wild, but it would be cool if Sank was explained around he's struggling with his healing factor, or Sank. Uh, meanwhile, back at Grey Mal uh, Malkin Prison, uh, they... Karina is uh, being told that Sarah going after the leader is just a diversion and the real goal is to kill the children. At this point, she doesn't really care. He tries to um, appeal to her sense to help them, you know, send out the new trustees. 
But uh, she says, you know, it's not our, our issue, so to speak. So Sarah's clearly twisted around Xavier and we'll, we'll understand perhaps why in, in, in a few minutes. But during this battle, um, Rogue confesses that she has kept a little bit of Miss Marvel in her pocket, in specifically in her right hand. So, um, you know, and then she says, Logan says, go to hell, which is quite cool. So they're fighting, but, you know, she's taken, the, she's been the crap out of Rogue. And Rogue says, give, give me a minute, you know, I could touch you, take your pants. And then she said, why, why would you want to be like me? And then she tells us a little bit about her story. So there was a, a hurricane and uh, clearly she had become a single mother at some point and was raising uh, Charles' son, Brian, which is uh, little Brian, which is named after Charles's father. And um, this hurricane leaves them on, on the roof of their house trying to survive. And she's holding on with one arm and then she's holding on to Brian with, with, her, with her right hand. And at some point she didn't realize she had let go. He was gone gone to the winds and then eventually you know after perhaps putting this message up there saying she's sorry she let go and she ended up in a drink and then several days later she came out like this and you can imagine she does not want to be considered a, mut a mutant you know she's disgusted by them and um, also because of this she also feeds off everything around her you know, everything is um, literally up for grabs to empower her. So next step, it she just snaps Rogue's arm like a twig. She is powerful. Um, <clears throat> so Dr. Karina actually reaches out to Gamma and tells him what's coming up ahead. And uh, they go out there, free X-Men off to send their children to the basement. There is some weird army out there, and I'm not sure where this army comes from. It will be interesting to find out a bit more about that, because you don't just bring an army. Um, you know, you, you enlist them or whatever. So the children say that, that they don't want to die in the basement. It's either we die in the basement or we die up here with you, you know. And Gambit gives apparently the worst speech in the world. He, I don't got a catchphrase. Fight forward. No shame in running if you need to. And then Logan comes out saying that is the worst thing. He says, have you ever heard Chuck in or, or Summers? It's like listening to Corner Grow. Um, so, and then Logan's just like, I mean, his eyes are, are clearly not recovered. He's like, point me in the right direction and here, here go for it. So it, it was a good issue. Um, there was just a, a little bit of, um, and don't get me wrong, I, I understand characters change i would have understood if um you know maybe logan said she she you know she did real damage to me and you know maybe scared of me some some of wolverine's best enemies have been when he's lost a fight and then he has to come out of it if that makes sense and you know and it's like with everything we read we like it when the x-men lose to some extent and they're on the ropes and then they have to come out and defeat their ad adversary um, and I said that it, the words didn't come out correctly. But yeah, uh, other than that, really good issue. Quite solid. I love the art. Um, some good, decent fight scenes in there. And some real development, especially in terms of Sarah. I really did enjoy that bit of growth in, in particular. So um, there we go. Hope you like my video. If you do, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. Make sure you look after yourself. Very important these days. And as always, embrace geekiness. Take care. Goodbye.